Hey, welcome back. So we're going to begin with chapter three and we'll see how long I get to read without interruptions. So if you do have the book, I hope that you follow along with me. So we left off on chapter three. Where is here? Jack looked out the window. He looked down at the picture in the book. He looked back out the window. The world outside and the world in the picture, they were exactly the same. The pteranodon was soaring through the sky. The ground was covered with ferns and tall grass. There was a winding stream, a sloping hill, and volcanoes in the distance. Where are we? stammered Jack. The pteranodon glided down to the base of the tree. The creature coasted to a stop and stood very still. What happened to us? said Annie. She looked at Jack and he looked at her. I don't know, said Jack. I was looking in the picture book and you said, wow, I wish I could see a pteranodon for real, said Annie. Yeah, and then we saw one in the Frog Creek woods, said Jack. Yeah, and, the, and then the wind got loud and the tree started spinning, said Annie. And we landed here, said Jack. And we landed here, said Annie. So that means, said Jack. So that means what, said Annie. Nothing, said Jack. He shook his head. None of this can be real. Annie looked out the window again. But he's real, she said. He's very real. Jack looked out the window with her. The pteranodon was standing at the base of the oak tree, like a guard. His giant wings were spread out on either side of him. Hi, shouted Annie. Shh, said Jack. We're not supposed to be here. But where is here, said Annie. I don't know, said Jack. Annie called again to the creature. The pteranodon looked up at them. Where is here? Annie called down. You're nuts. He can't talk, said Jack. But maybe the book can tell us. Jack looked down at the book. He read the words under the picture. This flying reptile lived in the Cretaceous period. It vanished 65 million years ago. No, impossible. They couldn't have landed in a time 65 million years ago. Jack, said Annie, he's nice. Nice? Yeah, I can tell. Let's go down and talk to him. Talk to him? Annie started down the rope ladder. Hey, shouted Jack, but Annie kept going. Are you crazy? Jack called. Annie dropped to the ground. She stepped boldly up to the ancient creature. Chapter four, Henry. Jack gasped as Annie held out her hands. Oh, brother, she was always trying to make friends with animals, but this was going too far. Don't get close to him, Annie. Jack shouted, but Annie touched the pteranodon's crest. She stroked his neck. She was talking to him. What in the world was she saying? Jack took a deep breath. Okay, he would go down too. He would be, it would be good to examine the creature. Take notes, like a scientist. Jack started down the rope ladder. When he got to the ground, Jack was only a few feet away from the creature. The creature stared at Jack. His eyes were bright and alert. He's soft, Jack, said Annie. He feels like Henry. Jack snorted. He's no dog, Annie. Feel him, Jack, said Annie. Jack didn't move. Don't think, Jack. Just do it. Jack stepped forward. He put out his arm very cautiously. 
he brushed his hand down the creature's neck. Interesting. A thin layer of fuzz covered the pteranodon's skin. Soft, huh? said Annie. Jack reached into his backpack and pulled out a pencil and a fuzzy, <laughs> not a fuzzy, if you're reading along with me, yep, I make mistakes. So he pulled out a pencil and a notebook and he wrote fuzzy skin. What are you doing? asked Annie. Taking notes, said Jack. We're probably the first people in the whole world to ever see a real live pteranodon. Jack looked at the pteranodon again. The creature had a bony crest on the top of his head. The crest was longer than Jack's arm. Very smart, said Annie. Don't count on it, said Jack. His brain's probably no bigger than a bean. No, he's very smart. I can feel it, said Annie. I'm going to call him Henry. Jack wrote in his notebook, small brain, question mark. I hope that you are enjoying seeing the pictures as I am inserting them in between the readings. Jack looked at the creature again. Maybe he's a mutant, he said. The creature tilted his head. Annie laughed. He's no mutant, Jack. Well, what's he doing here then? Where is this place, said Jack. Annie leaned close to the pteranodon. Do you know where we are, Henry? She asked softly. The creature fixed his eyes on Annie. His long jaws were opening and closing like a giant pair of scissors. Are you trying to talk to me, Henry? Asked Annie. Forget it, Annie, Jack wrote in his notebook. Mouth like scissors? Question. Did he come to a long, did he, did we come to a long time ago, Henry? Asked Annie. Is this a place from long ago? Suddenly she gasped, Jack! He looked up. Annie was pointing toward the hill. On top stood a huge dinosaur. Chapter five, Gold in the Grass. Go, go, said Jack. He threw his notebook into his pack. He pushed Annie toward the rope ladder. Bye, Henry, she said. Go, said Jack. He gave Annie a big push. Quit it, she said. But she started up the ladder. Jack scrambled after her. They tumbled into the treehouse. They were panting as they looked out the window at the dinosaur. He was standing on the hilltop, eating flowers off a tree. Oh man, whispered Jack. We are in a time long ago. The dinosaur looked like a huge rhinoceros, only he had three horns instead of one two long ones above his eyes and one on his nose. He had a big shield-like thing behind his head. Triceratops, said Jack. Does he eat people? whispered Annie. I'll look it up. Jack grabbed the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. There, he said. He pointed to a picture of a triceratops. He read the caption. The triceratops lived in the late Cretaceous period. This plant-eating dinosaur weighed over 12,000 pounds. Jack slammed the book shut. Just plants, no meat. Let's go see him, said Annie. Are you nuts, said Jack. Don't you want to take notes about him, asked Annie. We're probably the first people in the whole world to ever see a real triceratops. Jack sighed. She was right. Let's go, he said. He shoved the dinosaur book into his pack. He slung it over his shoulder and started down the ladder. On the way down, Jack stopped. He called up to Annie. Just promise you won't pet him. I promise. Promise you won't kiss him. I promise. Promise you won't talk to him. I promise. Promise you won't go, go, she said. Jack went. Annie followed. When they stepped off the ladder, the pteranodon gave them a kind look. Annie blew a kiss at him. Be back soon, Henry. 
she said cheerfully. Shh, said Jack, and he led the way through the ferns slowly and carefully. When he reached the bottom of the hill, he kneeled behind a fat bush. Annie knelt beside him and started to speak. Shush! Jack put his fingers to his lips. Annie made a face. Jack peeked out at the triceratops. The dinosaur was incredibly big, bigger than a truck. He was eating the flowers off a magnolia tree. He slipped his notebook out of his pack and he wrote, eats flowers. Annie nudged him. Jack ignored her. He studied the triceratops again. He wrote, eats slowly. Annie nudged him hard. Jack looked at her. Annie pointed to herself. She walked her fingers through the air. She pointed to the dinosaur. She smiled. Was she teasing? She waved at Jack. Jack started to grab her. She laughed and jumped away. She fell into the grass in full view of the Triceratops. Get back, whispered Jack. Too late. The big dinosaur had spotted Annie. He gazed down at her from the hilltop. Half of a magnolia flower was sticking out of his mouth. Oops, said Annie. Get back, Jack shouted at her. He looks nice, Jack. Nice? Watch out for his horns, Annie. No, he's nice, Jack. Nice? But the Triceratops just gazed calmly down at Annie. Then he turned and loped away down the side of the hill. Bye, said Annie. She turned back to Jack. See? Jack grunted, but he wrote in his notebook, nice. Come on, let's look around some more, said Annie. As Jack started after Annie, he saw something glittering in the tall grass. He reached out and picked it up. A medallion. A gold medallion. A letter was engraved on the medallion. A fancy M. Oh man, someone came here before us, Jack said softly. Chapter 6, Dinosaur Valley. Annie, look at this, Jack called. Look what I found. Annie had gone up to the hilltop. She was busy picking a flower from the magnolia tree. Annie, look, a medallion. But Annie wasn't paying any attention to Jack. She was staring at something on the other side of the hill. Oh, wow, she said. Annie, clutching her magnolia flower, she took off down the hill. Annie, come back, Jack shouted. But Annie had disappeared. I'm going to kill her, Jack muttered. He stuffed the gold medallion into his jeans pocket. Then he heard Annie shriek. Annie? Jack heard another sound as well. A deep bellowing sound like a tuba. Jack, come here, Annie called. Annie! Jack grabbed his backpack and raced up the hill. When he got to the top, he gasped. The valley below was filled with nest. Big nest made out of mud, and the nest were filled with tiny dinosaurs. Annie was crouching next to the one. Annie was crouching next to one of the nest, and standing over her was a gigantic duck-billed dinosaur. Don't panic. Don't move, said Jack. He stepped slowly down the hill toward Annie. The huge dinosaur was towering above Annie, waving her arms, making her tuba sound. Jack stopped. He didn't want to get too close. He knelt on the ground. Okay, move toward me slowly, he said. Annie started to stand up. Don't stand, crawl, said Jack. Clutching her flower, Annie crawled toward Jack. The duck-billed dinosaur followed her, still bellowing. Annie froze. 
Keep going, Jack said softly. Annie started crawling again. Jack inched farther down the hill until he was just an arm's distance from Annie. He reached out and grabbed her hand. He pulled Annie toward him. Stay down, he said. He crutched next to her. Bow your head. Pretend to chew. Chew? Yes, I, I read that's what you do if a mean dog comes at you. She's no dog, Jack, said Annie. Just chew, said Jack. Jack and Annie both bowed their heads and pretended to chew. Soon the dinosaur grew quiet. Jack raised his head. I don't think she's mad anymore, he said. Thanks, Jack, for saving me, said Annie. You have to use your brain, said Jack. You can't just go running to a nest of babies. There's always a mother nearby. Annie stood up. Annie! Too late. Annie held out her magnolia flower to the dinosaur. I'm sorry I made you worry about your babies, she said. The dinosaur moved closer to Annie. She grabbed the flower from her. She reached for another. No more, said Annie. The dinosaur let out a sad tuba sound. But there are more flowers up there, Annie said. She pointed to the top of the hill. I'll get you some. Annie hurried up the hill. The dinosaur waddled after her. Jack quickly examined the babies. Some were crawling out of their nest. Where were the other mothers? Jack took out the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. He found a picture of some duck-billed dinosaurs. He read the caption. The Anatosauruses lived in colonies. While a few mothers babysat the nest, others hunted for food. So there must be more mothers close by. Hey, Jack, Annie called. Jack looked up. Annie was at the top of the hill, feeding magnolia flowers to the giant Anatosaurus. She's nice too, Jack, Annie said. But suddenly, the Anatosaurus made her terrible tuba sound. Annie crouched down and started to chew. The dinosaur barged down the hill. She seemed afraid of something. Jack put the book down on top of his pack. He hurried up to Annie. I wonder why she ran away, said Annie. We were starting to be friends. Jack looked around. What he saw in the distance almost made him throw up. An enormous ugly monster was coming across the plain. He was walking on two big legs and swinging a long thick tail and daggling two tiny arms. He had a huge head and his jaws were wide open. Even from far away, Jack could see his long gleaming teeth. Tyrannosaurus Rex, whispered Jack. 